So the first thing is, uh, are you comfortable like that on your side? Yes. Yeah. Would you be more comfortable if we had your hand up here? No, because I can't watch you. I oh, see what you want to see what we're doing. Okay, all right, no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here between the median and the ulnar nerve, just proximal to the wrist crease by about four millimeters. And the, if you go like this, palmaris longus stands out, the median nerve is just radial to uh, the palmaris longus. Uh, and can you do that for me? Just touch your little finger to your, there you go. She doesn't have a palmaris longus, so it doesn't really matter. I know where her median nerve is, and I never want to get in it. I never want to elicit paresthesias. You only do that to people that you really don't like. And I really like Miriam. Well, that's good. I'm so, glad. So there's only one rule about the freezing, and that's the don't move rule. Because uh, it's normal when somebody sticks a needle in you, you want to yeah. ouch yeah. like that, right? But if you go like that before I get the medicine in, then i got to stick it in again, and it hurts two times. Yeah. If you don't move, it hurts one time. Are we good? Yes. So at the okay. count of three, try not to move, okay? Yep. One, two, three. So what I did there is I pressed quite firmly with my finger, just proximal to where the needle went in. And as soon as I got in, I put in a bleb that I could actually see. And now I'm still pressing on the plunger, but incredibly slowly, because I need this needle sight to get numb. Notice that my hand was stabilized uh, or the syringe was stabilized with both hands my thumb was ready on the plunger because if you're doing a lot of wobbling with that needle they feel every little wobble until you stop wobbling uh, so muriel is the sting of the needle all gone now it's gone completely yeah how long did it take to go away second yeah sometimes it takes five or ten seconds uh, and at this point, the sin is to blast it in quick and move your needle around. What you don't want to do is do that. You want to keep your needle in one place and get at least two cc's in there. So this syringe had 11 cc's. It's a 10 cc syringe. It had one cc of 8.4% bicarbonate, and I drew that up first. And then I drew up 10 cc's of 1% uh, lidocaine, uh, with one in a hundred thousand epinephrine. Uh, the pH of lidocaine with epinephrine is uh, an average of 4.2 with a range of 3.3 to 5.5 depending on how long it's been on the shelf. And the p uh, bicarb takes it to a pH of 7.4. The right mixture is 1 cc to 10. And fortunately a 10 cc syringe just happens to hold 11 cc's. Dolores, can you come closer? Just keep filming and walk closer and show the hand from up above so that they can see this large goose egg that's being put there. You see the big goose egg that's all, all white. Um, it's probably more local than what you need. People accuse me of putting in too much freezing. Uh, but, you know, I've never had one patient ever complain about being too numb, but I've had lots of people complain about being not numb enough over the years. So what I'm doing now is slowly advancing my needle to make sure that the needle gets underneath the superficial forearm fascia. The superficial forearm fascia creates a natural barrier to diffusion of local anesthesia, and if you get all of your local above the superficial forearm fascia, you won't get a median nerve block. You don't need a median nerve block to do carpal tunnel release. If you don't have a median nerve block, you'll still be fine unless you press on or touch or zing the median nerve, in which case they'll get a little electrical shock, which I personally don't like to give my patients, which is why I block their median nerve. So I always go between the median and ulnar nerve so they never get hurt. So we put in the first 10 cc's which is median and ulnar nerve block. Now when you reinsert the needle always reinsert it within a centimeter of white. The wrist crease is also a natural barrier to local anesthesia and so uh, it's hard for the local to go past the wrist crease. It likes to go proximal to the wrist crease. So I'm going to put my needle proximal to the wrist crease at least a centimeter back from where it's white. If it's white, it means I have functioning 
uh, epinephrine molecules. If I have functioning epinephrine molecules, then I probably have functioning lidocaine molecules. Now, Muriel, did you feel that needle go in? No. No. Uh, and that's good. That's what you want. You want Muriel to just feel the first poke and nothing else. Now, I always want at least a centimeter of local ahead of my needle tip. Uh, and so I'm always thinking in my head, blow slow before you go. Blow slow before you go. And I always palpate to see where the local is. So the local's out here. It's white to here. Here I have functioning epinephrine. Here I have local that's still not functioning. So I don't really want my needle tip in there, do I? Because she's going to feel that. And I'm trying to get a hole in one, which means she just feels the first poke. If she feels pain two times, that's an eagle, three times is a birdie. I score myself and all of my medical students and residents each time we inject local anesthesia for carpal tunnel. It's kind of like a little game that we play with ourselves, but even more importantly, we get instant feedback from the patients so that we know that we're getting better at our local anesthesia injection instead of saying the same, which is really not what you want to do in surgery. You always want to get better or even worse, getting worse. So, Muriel, how many times have you felt pain uh, so far? None. Well, you must have felt the first... The first little pinch. First little pinch. How bad was that? Didn't even notice hardly. Right. And part of the reason for that is that I created the sensory noise by pressing on the skin just proximal to where I went in. And the second reason is I'm using a 27 gauge needle. I quit using a 25 gauge needle years ago. Uh, you can just blast it in with a 25 and most importantly I don't do this kind of stuff anymore where I just blast the stuff ahead because then your sharp needle tip is constantly encountering live nerves and that's an experience that patients will wish that they had never met you when they go through it and so what you want to do is make it nice for them uh, because the epinephrine is going to get rid of the tourniquet. We won't need a tourniquet here, but we're going to let this work at least half an hour. It's been shown with level one evidence in humans that it takes 26 minutes for maximal vasoconstriction with epinephrine. So now I'm going to go off and do something useful, like inject a few other patients, do a few other little cases, tell Muriel this is like baking a cake after you put it in the oven. you got to wait at least a half an hour. So she's going to read something or tell her friends stories, and we'll be back in a while.